Well, hi there, Mower Mike here, Mower Mike's Garage. And what have I got? This sure as dang is not a lawnmower. What we've got here is the ultimate American symbol of just American badassness and excessiveness. What it is is a 2001 Harley Davidson Fat Boy soft tail. Now, this is pre fuel injection, pre the 101 motors. This is a straight air cooled 88 inch uh, Harley motor they made forever. An awesome, cool machine. Uh, it's owned by my buddy Bob's wife, Bridget, who is an awesome woman, and she looks pretty cool on this bike, but uh, she's been set up to rot for a little while. She's been in the garage for about four or five years, just hasn't moved, uh, fuel's all gummed up, she's got lots of issues. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the quickest way possible uh, to get this old girl started, and I'm going to treat it like a lawnmower, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going to buy myself a $60 carb on the Amazon, strap it on, and see if she starts up. Because we need to get Miss Bridget back on the road because she is a, uh, a motorcycling lady. So let's see how this works and uh, hang on and strap in and let's uh, go for a ride. So our first step is we want to get underneath all this beautiful Harley chrome and get to the carburetor so we can see what we're working with. Now the big old fat air cover comes off with an H8 Allen wrench size. So just slide that off. Not quite sure what the H8 is. But that's what's on the socket. All right, now we've got the air filter. As you can see, this one looks like uh, Miss Bridget never changed the air filter, so that is definitely a bad move. It's pretty dirty, so let's go ahead and get it off. You'll see here, if you just got three bolts, and you undo those three, which is a 5 seconds uh, Allen wrench here, and they should just come off super easy. And just be careful working with these little bolts. If something doesn't come off, just be easy with it, because the last thing you want to do is strip out some Harley threads, because that would be no, no bueno. All right. This is really cool, because being carbureted, we can actually work on this sucker. All right, so now we're getting down in the throat of her. So next, which is pretty wild, it's going to have three, one of them came off, so three of uh, these thingies here. So what this is, they're threaded on the end where that air filter cleaner cover goes, but you have to take those off. And those are half inch here. I've already got them loose. <laughs> it's so cool. I've worked on a lot of motorcycles, but I've got to tell you right now, I've never used uh, standard sizes. So I've only worked on Japanese motorcycles. So this is my first Harley. So it's pretty cool, something a little different. Now you'll see up here, you've got two of those guys, which is the star size. I don't even know what it says. Let's see, a T30. Now earlier I used the wrong star size and that's dangerous because the last thing you want to do is strip these guys out. Make sure get, to get the T30 size so you don't make a mistake and ruin your fancy Harley Davidson. So let's go ahead and slide that out. All right, let's see what we're looking at. Now it's going to be hanging on just with an air, I don't know what that is, it's just a breather tube, tube is all it is. Now let's look at what we got going on here. Now to get down to the carburetor, what you've got here is an oil transfer tube deal, the metal piece, and it's held on by two bolts right there, which those are a three quarter bolts so just go ahead and just be easy with them and you're going to go ahead and take those off and once that comes off you just got to be real easy because they've got these little washers underneath here that and if you lose your washer uh, you're kind of up the creek this is a actually a hollow bolt as you'll see just put your finger underneath there like so just so you don't lose that washer and just catch it those are just little brass watchers. All right, we'll get the other side here. And this keeps the oil into the top of the valves between the two cylinders. So we keep nice and lubricated. Everything likes a little bit of lube, right? All right, whoa, 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 whoa. hang on to that guy. <laughs> As you can see, I dropped these in my practice run. So I'm trying not to drop it in my professional on TV run. Yes, I do practice these a couple times to make sure I know what the hell I'm doing. All right, so now we've got underneath there, and you can see here, it's just a simple carburetor. And I've got the fuel line coming over here, so I'm gonna go ahead and unhook that, and we'll get a little deeper. So let's go on to the next step. 
<laughs> so the next thing we need to do, we gotta unhook this fuel line so we can drain all this four year old gas out of here. Now this one's a little different. It's got a fuel clip on there. I'm gonna have to cut off. This is actually a crimped on fuel clamp, which to me, it looks like it is definitely not stock. Some goober put this thing on here. Why? I have no idea. Oh, make sure not to lose that. So these you have to cut off. There's no way to take those off. All right, you can see there we got, a, we got this sucker started. And then I'm just gonna unhook it. And this is definitely getting herself a new fuel line on here. Oh boy, I bet you this stuff's gonna stink too. All right, so I got it unhooked. Now, before I did that, I went around and I turned off the fuel. So let's turn on the fuel on the petcock and we'll see what happens here. We getting any flow? No flow yet? <laughs> no flow at all, huh? Well, I have a stinking suspicion that might be why this thing wasn't running too good. I've uh, seen something else that looks a little fishy underneath the fuel tank. So let me go ahead and release this whole fuel line. Let's take a look at it. All right, so we're on the other side of the motorcycle. And what I've done, I've pulled the gas line out from underneath the gas tank. This is where it would typically hook into the carburetor where I cut it off on the other side. This is your fuel pet cock that turns on the gas. So you can see right now, we turn it on, you've got nothing. Nothing at all. Now, <laughs> what have we got in the middle of this fuel line? What is that? What is that little plastic thing? I'll tell you what that is. That's about a 20 cent fuel filter typically used on a trimmer, a trimmer motor. Maybe a motor about a 20th the size of this. This is 88 cubic inches of American steel. And they've got a crappy little trimmer motor fuel filter on there. So my suspicion is that is why this old girl is not running. Now, whoever put this on here, I don't know what they were thinking, smoking or drinking, but it was not a good idea. And it's a freaking shame that somebody paid for this type of work. So let's go ahead and cut this damn thing off and see what we're working with. All right, so we've got that stupid little thing off there. Oh geez, look at that. It's all broken off up in there. Let me take a little more of the... All right, now I'm curious, now that we've got that off, if we might have a little more fuel flow here. I want to make sure, in case we do, that I don't spill fuel all over my shop, as usual. All right, we've got nothing. So, that wasn't the culprit. Now, what my guess is, is that there's actually a filter up here in the fuel cup petcock, because this gas tank is full of fuel. So, next step is, let's tear down in this fuel petcock and see what we're working with. Okay, so I think I've traced down what a possible culprit could be. This here is the fuel petcock, which leads to the uh, carburetor. So this turns the gas on and off. And you can see when you turn it on, I get nothing. Get nothing at all, turn it off. So there's not any gas getting to the carburetor. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove this fuel petcock. Now this is a vacuum operated petcock, which we'll talk about in a minute. It's got a vacuum line behind here. So I've popped that off. And then once that off, now I've also cut the fuel line there. And then it's just a one inch nut holding her onto the tank. And you know, this, this gas has been here for about three years. I have no idea what we're gonna get into when I take this thing off. So hopefully this goes okay. I've got my, my jinky, <laughs> my jinky funnel underneath here. Got my jinky camera set up. Oh my gosh. Okay, well it's coming. Uh, as you can see now, we're getting some fuel. So this thing definitely had fuel in it and I've gone ahead and I've tried to funnel as much fuel as I could out of there with a siphon pump. But as you can see, we definitely did not get all the fuel. So this is some, oh gosh, if you got, had smell vision right now, you would smell what I'm smelling. Now make sure to, I've got the battery off. I mean, it's completely pulled out of this bike, so there's no risk of fire. And I do not have my safety goggles on, which I apparently should, working on this thing. Oh, come on, baby, come off for me. Oh my gosh, we got way more gas than I planned. I'm trying to keep the gas from going into the actual cylinder. Oh shoot, 
All right, now I'm tempted just to pull this whole thing down, but this is obviously a problem where it was not allowing gas to get to the motor. Now these, which a lot of people don't know, actually have a filter up in here. So that's part of the problem that can get clogged. And you can see this one here is, uh, she's stuck in there a bit, isn't she? Come on, baby. Hopefully this does not get turned bad on me. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, okay. There's obviously some more gas situation. You know, uh, hopefully fuel spilled all over Harley motor does not affect it. There's a lot of chrome on here. Oh, shoot. Oh, boy, we got, we got gas. We got a lot of gas. Okay, I think I've got it. Oh, boy. This uh, definitely has a lot of gas in her. <laughs> that did not go nearly as smoothly as I thought it would. Holy cow. So that pet cock was definitely holding back a lot of fuel from running through that motor. <laughs> so, well, one way or the other, we got all the fuel out of her. So let me go ahead and try to clean up this mess before uh, that fuel pits all this chrome. I'll be right back. So now let's talk about this interesting contraption I've pulled off here called a vacuum operated Harley Davidson fuel pet cock. Now, a regular pet cock, what it does is that this screws onto the gas tank and in here there's a filter and there's a tube deal underneath it. Now the fuel comes into here. You've got a little switch reserve on and off, uh, turns the gas on, allows the gas to go out the uh, fuel tank line, goes from the gas line into the carburetor, your fuel injection, then you go boom, boom, you're off zooming around. Now Harley Davidson decided to put themselves a safety deal on this thing. So what they've done is this little hole here, that goes to a vacuum line. That vacuum line hooks up to your intake on the other side of the motor. Now when your intake is moving, um, not when your intake's moving, but when you're actually cranking that motorcycle, it does create a vacuum in that intake. Now that suction comes through this, pulls a little diaphragm out, it'll pop. Then once that diaphragm is popped out, it allows the fuel to go, go through here and back through your fuel line. Now, if there is no suction coming through there, in other words, that motor is not turning, it will not open that diaphragm. And even though you have it on on or reserve, it'll keep this shut. So until you're cranking that motor, either it's running full speed or you're trying to start it, it will not allow gas through there. Now the reasons they do that is they say it's for safety where if you leave this on you don't, and you have some sort of gas leak, it doesn't spill your tank all over the, the motor. That ah, doesn't really make sense to me. So what a lot of people do is they'll just cap off this guy here, cap off the actual vacuum line coming in and just put a regular pet cock on there, which is an option, which I thought about doing, but this is not my motorcycle, so I'm just going back with stock parts. So what I've done, I've gone to the Harley dealer and I got the new Petcock kit. Now this kit, it has everything you need. It is not cheap, uh, but that's the number right there. The 61338-94D for the big twin. <laughs> I like how Harley labels everything. They call, they call things fat or big or whatever they call it. But that comes with a kit. So what it does, you get this and you get the actual kit, which has the new filters, the new nut that goes on there, and a new little gasket. If you just want the kit, that's the number there, dash super. So it's just an interesting contraption. I've never seen anything like this before. There's stuff all over the internet on it. But I do believe this is part of the reason it was not running is that this diaphragm in the back here was not opening up because they just get old and crusty and it was not allowing fuel to that carburetor. So what we're doing, we're gonna strap this dude on and see if uh, we can get a little fuel to the little girl. All right, so now to install our new valve here. Now the Harley instructions come with a very good and detailed set of instructions, which you're gonna need, because this is a very odd procedure here. You gotta make sure you do it just right. So first thing I'm gonna do is install the new filter. Now this being an FL, it uses this longer filter. It does come with two. Check your instructions on which ones to use. Now, if you try to install this with it already installed on the valve, you will not be able to get it up in the hole. So just go ahead and slide it up in the hole about halfway, well, all the way. That looks good. All right, so next, you've got your new nut here. Now, it says to use a thread sealant on the new nut. So, Loctite pipe sealant with Teflon or equivalent, which is what I've got here. So we'll go ahead and put that on the nut. 
Oh yeah. Now if it says to use sealant, you always use sealant. Now on the nut, make sure the round part goes up towards the uh, fuel tank here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna slide this all the way up in there. And then, now once you get it on there, it says to, <laughs> two turns. So let's do exactly two turns with this sucker. One, two, and that's it. Don't tighten her all the way. You're gonna screw this whole situation up. So now you've got it on there. New fuel for two turns, right-handed. Then take your fuel supply valve and make sure to put your new gasket on the mounting surface right there. And then you thread that on there two turns, but in the opposite direction. So this time we're going lefty. Let's see if I can get this sucker. Oh shit. All right, sorry for the delay, but apparently I just found out something. The old fuel valve with the metal back cover was made in Milwaukee with uh, standard size American wrenches. Uh, the new one is made in Japan with metric. So what I've got here is a 28. Uh, the old one was a one incher. One inchers are no longer good on Harley parts. I don't know what Harley makes in Milwaukee anymore, but it is not vacuum operated. Petcocks. <laughs> Maybe they just make the fuel tanks out there. I don't know what's going on these days with Harley. But uh, we're going to get this old girl running. If it is the last thing I do. Because I get slightly determined. So let me go ahead and tighten this sucker up. Once I tighten it up, I'm going to rehook on the fuel line to the left here with some new clamps. And also I'm going to slide that uh, vacuum line back on the back. And we're going to give her a little test to see if this sucker's pumping fuel. Okay, gang, what we're going to do is a very high-tech Harley fuel test. What I've got is an Azarka bottle, best water in Texas, hooked up to a long fuel line. And I've got my new fuel cock, pack, fuel cock hooked up. Crazy Harley design requires a vacuum. So I've got the vacuum line hooked up to the, the fuel pet cock. And in theory, when I crank it, it should shoot gas out into this Ozarka bottle. And then we should be uh, rocking and rolling with new fuel. As you see here, I've got no fuel in it even though it's on so hopefully with that vacuum it'll uh, shoot some fuel out and you guys tell me if it works or not so with that i'm going to go ahead and let her rip and we'll uh we'll see how it goes here all right we got fuel baby look at that look at that <laughs> like see before we had no fuel getting out of there so i'm gonna go ahead and turn it off and make sure but uh hey folks that is, that is pretty freaking cool. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and rehook up this thing and see if she cranks. I haven't even touched that carburetor, so I'm very curious if it just wasn't getting fuel. Let's find out. All right, gang, are you ready for a test? Because I sure am. I, I have never worked on a Harley before. This Harley hasn't started in over four years as it looks like hammered hell. I really don't think it's gonna start, but we're gonna crank her and see what happens. I do know it's now getting fuel. I have not touched the carburetor. All I've done is put some fresh fuel in it. I uh, added oil, put a new battery in it. So let's see if she uh, cranks. All I've got here is my lucky hat, smoking windmill, best barbecue in Texas, and my favorite tool, a little starter fluid. Shh, don't tell the Harley guys I got starter fluid for their ride. All right, I got the choke out. <laughs> I got my fingers crossed. Let's see what happens, ladies and gentlemen. tune her up for a little bit that was a win all right let's see if i can keep her running and we'll, we'll get another shot here all right gang i'm back well the pet cock worked then we got her to run but only on choke so next i want to go ahead and pull this carburetor off and see if we can't clean her up uh, because i'm sure there are some issues in here now to me it looks shockingly simple to pull off this carburetor i have never pulled off a honda car i mean a harley carburetor i've pulled probably pulled off 50 honda carburetors uh, the first thing I noticed was I was messing around with it. There is no hose clamp on this intake. Look at this intake, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it just pulled right off. I probably put five pounds of pressure on it and that carburetor just pulled off. So I'm pretty sure we probably had some intake leaks from this 20-year-old gasket. 
And then it looks like he just... Uh, We're just gonna pull the uh, the lever. Well, shoot. Let me do a little more research here. All right. So now we need to remove the throttle cables up top here. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm not sure if this is the official way, is pull them out of their keepers up top, and that way you pull them down. It makes it easier to uh, pop them out like so. Come on, baby. That one. Oh, once you get that one off, the other one's easy peasy. So that is how easy. The throttle cables come off, and we've got a major issue with one of them here. As you see, the throttle cable thingy is broke, uh, but it looks like that's how we hook that side. And the other side is really just a hose clamp to the gas line and a couple vacuum lines, and she's off, so that should be real easy. So now we get to do the fun part. So I've got the carburetor pulled off. I've got the four screws unhooked from the, the bowl of the carburetor and what we're gonna do we're gonna do an ultimate super duper close-up as i pull the bowl off of here maybe we'll see why she is not running too well come on baby come off for the camera <laughs> look at that that is amazing look what that ethanol crap does to these jets so you could tell that jet has a lot of corrosion on it so what we're gonna do first i'm gonna go after the big boy here and just undo this main jet with a uh, 5 16 and that is just, just freaking disgusting. You know, we had an ethanol uh, podcast, and Dr. Bob said that ethanol doesn't do this to carburetors. So this one's for you, Dr. Bob. Look at that. That thing is clogged up. Well, it's not. See, the thing is, you can see some clogged, but not, not all the way clogged. So that's why it was running on chokes. So it was still running. But you see, we need to clear that sucker out. So what I'm going to do is take a shot of what we got. We got the old gum out carb cleaner. Oh, ultimate close up. And give her a shot here. See if we can just clear this out real quick for the camera. Make sure you use your, your gaggles. And then I've got right here just a little carb brush. We'll shove one of these guys in here and see how she looks. Whoa. Got to match up the right diameter and girth to the hole in the in the jet here. That looks like a good one. There we go. Well, hang on now. Let's see how she looks now. Oh, yeah. She looks much better. Look how clean that sucker is. So I'm going to go ahead and just clean out the rest of them. You can see these little holes here on the side. I like to use my little wire trick, or if I can get one of these guys in here, just to clean out every single little hole on this old carburetor jet, and that way we can get this old girl back running again. You can see here. All right, I'd like to show you guys a trick I use on these jets. You can see I got the middle one real clear. I mean, she looks good, but on the side, there's all these little tiny holes, and you're not going to find a car brush that's small enough to go in those holes. So what I do is I just get a piece of wire and you get that wire in there and a good gauge wire, just one little strand there. You can get into each of these holes and clean it out real good. And then once you get it cleaned out, then you can come through with your, your carp spray. Now check this out. We're gonna get a little crazy with it. What I like to do just put a finger on the end once you get all those little holes cleared out and shoot the carb spray through there. Make sure you got your goggles on <laughs> and see. Hopefully I didn't shoot it all over my telephone. But uh, that is a main jet and she is cleared out pretty good. So usually the main jet is a big culprit. Now let's go ahead and see where the main jet sits in here. Now you can see here that's the needle from there. So that controls the amount of... Uh, gasoline coming up through that main jet so I like to go in there get that real clean get one of these little brushes here slide it down in there you just mainly want to get that the tip of that needle clean that way it seats into that main jet real well now we've got our main jet all cleaned up now let's take a look at the low speed jet I get my feeling that it might be worse than the main now your main one as you can see was right here your low speed one is buried down in there and it is notched 
So just take a flathead screwdriver and you want the largest flathead screwdriver you can fit down here. Don't put a little tiny one because you're going to strip it out. It's just a brass jet. So go in there, find where it's at, and it might take a little umph to get that sucker unlocked because they get screwed in there. I, I already unlocked this sucker. But uh, yeah, take her out and let's see what she looks like. <laughs> I get the feel on this one. She ain't going to be pretty just like the last fat one. Her big sister... Little fatty was clogged, but you know, little sister might have some in there too. <laughs> oh boy, let's take a look at her. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that, you can't even see through that thing. That thing is clogged, clogged, clogged up. What we need is a plumber. Get this sucker unclogged. So these are a little, real small. So a lot of times you have to use you know, the old wire trick. Oh my gosh, you can see here, that sucker isn't working. Let's try a little, little carb cleaner down its throat. See if that helps at all. You can see we're getting a lot of back pressure there. Um, this is gonna take a little work here. I'm gonna have to do a little research on how to get this sucker unclogged because she is real tight. So let me go ahead and play around with it a little bit and uh, see what I can get for you folks. All right, ladies, I'm going to show you a little trick I use for when you get these little tiny jets like this that you really can't get anything through. What I do is I get a little cap. Sometimes I use a paint cap. This is actually a off and off bottle and fill it full of carb cleaner. I've left it overnight. And once it's ready overnight, that way it loosens up any gunk you've got in there from before. So I'm going to go ahead and take it out now that we've got the gunk out of here. And next... You know, you really need compressed air if you're going to clean the carburetor out correctly. So get yourself an air compressor. You know, I've got my 60-gallon awesome Puma air compressor. If you're a man, you need some sort of air compressor in your life. And that way you can, you know, slowly become a man and then get your air ratchet and, and just make your life complete. But I go ahead and we'll give her a shot of air here. Just make sure to hang on to it so it doesn't take off like a damn bullet. But with that, you know, she's clean. You can barely, well, you can't see it on my camera, but it is clean. I've checked it out through there. You can see the light coming through there. Just check, make sure you get a round light. And these are really, really small. So with that, we've got both of our jets cleaned out. And so when you look in here, now just go through here and just make sure both jet holes are clean. Get lots of carb cleaner in there. Scrub it out the best you can. Make sure those are clean. And also this guy here. You got to make sure that thing there is clean. So what I do, I hit that with, you know, some carb cleaner. And this one's real small also. <laughs> well, hopefully I didn't just fry my camera. Uh-oh. All right. Well, uh, I, think, I think she, oh, uh, wow. Well, I'm going to have to come back to you guys because something went horribly wrong. Oh, wait. We're coming back in focus. How cool is that? Is that alcohol uh, slowly dries off or back? Wow. That was a lesson in physics. So... Go ahead and you can hear it coming all the way through and you'll be able to hear that come through the gut of the carburetor. So now we've got our main jet clear, our little jet clear, and this guy. And what you're going to do, you're going to go ahead and screw back in those two jets. And next we'll move on to the float. All right, so let's move on to the next part. We've got our, our jets clean, we got that thing clean. Next, we need to remove the float and the pin underneath here to make sure this old carb is getting some gas. So, what we need to do is push out this pin. This pin is what holds that float in there. A lot of times, you just push out on this old Harley. She is definitely not pushing out. So, what you need to do is get something smaller than that pin. I've got this old, whatever it is, some carburetor part. And I'm just gently, gently whacking it out. <laughs> You don't want to whack too hard. You want to be smooth. There you go, right? Because once you whack just a little bit, sometimes it just slides all the way through. And with that, let's see if she'll pull on out. You guys notice in the background, we got a little Texas country music going. Probably tired of hearing just me ramble on about Harley Davidson carbs. Look at that, all right, we got her out. Now, what is interesting here is that I think we got a clog. Because how this works is, the fuel comes in from here, comes in from the fuel tank, comes in here, fills up the bowl. As the bowl fills up, it pushes this up, it pushes that needle into the seat. That way to keep, it cuts off the fuel coming through there, keeps a constant level of fuel. So what you wanna do is make sure you're getting good flow 
from here to here now that we've got that out. Well, I mean from there to here. So let's go ahead and give her a little, little shot of carb juice down in there. See if we get a dribble. Whoa, we got some backfire shooting here. There, and then what I always like to do, let's just give her a little shot of compressed air up in that, that sucker. <laughs> Choo -choo. All right, you see we are definitely clear. And if you want to test what you can do, I just hook up a hose to here, and then you can blow and you should be able to hear it. <laughs> so we've got a good flow back through there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put these two jets back in here like so, real easy. This one screws in, and then if I can find my little guy, this one here screws in. Same way they took out, just make sure they go all the way in there tight, but not, don't, don't be He-Man on it. These are a brass jet, so don't do it too tight. And then we're going to go ahead and reinstall our new float. All right, so let's reinstall our float. We know we've got good flow from the gas tank to here. And before we get going, I'm gonna show you, I did get a seal kit. Got this off Amazon for like 20 bucks. This comes with everything you need to rebuild a carburetor. It does not come with new jets, but it comes with everything for the accelerator pump, all the gaskets, and it also comes with a new needle, which is necessary when you put these suckers back together. So when you get your new needle here, just slide her up on that little lip like so, and you're gonna drop her right down there in that hole just the way she came out. Come on, baby. And it's key to have a new needle in here because the tips of these things are rubber and they wear out. So we're gonna try to hammer back in our little piece of metal here. Sometimes these can be tricky. So you can see you push it in and then you just, you just wanna give her a little tap of ruski. Come on, baby. A little tippity tap now. Using hammers like this on a carburetor means you're doing the wrong thing, but come on, baby, just slide in there. All right. <laughs> I'm sure my father-in-law is wincing right now. He said, anytime you use a hammer on auto mechanics means you're breaking crap. But maybe we didn't break anything. And the way you can test it is you can come on here, hook up your hose and you can see right here, the needle's shut, so we shouldn't have any flow through there, which would be air or fuel, so let's take a listen. You can hear that as I lift it up. You've got a good seal, because it opens right up. Listen again here. <laughs> Super cool little trick. Old mower Mike taught you there. All right, so now one more thing I wanna do. I wanna clean out this right here. This is an idle air control valve thing, bobber. Now it's a screw down in here, and you want to set this screw, you want to pull the screw out so that way we can clean it. Before you pull it out, screw it down and count how many screws it is turned to the right. That way you can reset it exactly to the point. So this one here is about three screws from bottom. So when I install it, I know it'll be three screws from bottom. That way we can set it just right. So take that needle out there. Come on. See, and these do gum up a bit. It's got a little needle. This is just for your, I think it's an idle control. And go ahead and hit that sucker with uh, some carb cleaner. Hopefully we don't shoot my fancy Apple iPhone 27 in the face. Ooh, you can see we got a little cloggage there. So once you do that, get yourself some air pressure down in there. Boom, boom, boom. And then clean off your needle. And then just when you, when you set it, what you're gonna do, you're gonna screw it all the way in there. And then I'm gonna back mine off three turns because that's where, that's where she was. So I just, this is a real small little needle thing. So you can see in here, we're gonna screw her all the way down at first. Now, most of these carburetors for a motorcycle, usually they're anywhere between two and three turns out. If you're turning more than three turns out, you've probably got bigger issues than, than whatever's wrong with the screw. So you can see here, all right, that's bottomed out. So let's go one, two, 
and then a little less than three is where she was at. Three. <laughs> All right. So we've got this sucker cleaned up, which is awesome. We've got fuel coming in here through the needle. We've got the main jet cleaned out. We've got whatever that thing is cleaned out. We've got the, the idle jet cleaned out. We've got the air thingy cleaned out here. So now let's move on to the bowl. It's going to be a little more complex. I'm going to have to do a little studying. All right, so next thing we're going to talk about what an accelerator pump is on a Harley Davidson. Now, the accelerator pump is this deal right here. And what happens is it's got a little rod that when you crack the throttle to come off idle, when you push it down, it pushes that rod in there. And see that? It shoots gas out of this little nozzle. And that way it allows you to get off, off th throttle. I can see this one is working-ish, but we're going to go ahead and take it apart and clean it and make sure that diaphragm's good in there and uh, go from there. So the first thing you want to do is pull out that this guy here, the actual spray nozzle, and it's pressed in there. It's just a, a brass deal, so you can just pull her out. I have never actually done this before, but I learned on YouTube, so... So can you. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and, and just clean that sucker out. Has a perfect hole there. Whoa, make sure you got your goggles on. And you can see we got some good accelerator pump going through there. All right, get that sucker clear. And then I'm going to have to go empty this thing out. All right, you know what's amazing about the iPhone is that uh, it does resist gasoline and carb cleaner, apparently. <laughs> they make them pretty good in China. So what I'm going to do is shoot a little down here down this hole and just make sure we got... Let's see, I don't see anything coming out. See that little hole, I believe it's that one right there, maybe? That one? So, all right, so let's go ahead and... Just clean her out like so. And then also, it's always a good idea to get All right, so next we're gonna get throw a little air down in there. So you want to make sure that's clear coming through. So once we get that spray nozzle off, what we're going to do is we're going to take the diaphragm cover off. So I've already got this. It's just these three screws here. You can see underneath here, you've got a diaphragm. And what's cool about my little kit I got, it comes with a brand new one. So what we can do, I'm just going to go ahead and replace this. It comes with a new spring. So let's just, you just peel off that old one there and you just want to make sure you put the new one on same way as the old one which looks like it goes yeah so the little nub right there and we're gonna go ahead and make sure that well that hole is definitely clean and clean this thing up whoa lots of all right so let's go ahead and install our new diaphragm first make sure all this is clear make sure that hole right there is clear that's where the fuel comes in and you're going to put your button down so it goes down to face size so the fat button goes down up towards the carburetor because that's where your rod's going to hit and then you put your spring right there and whoa all right so now that we've got our diaphragm replaced there you want to look at our diaphragm cover now I've, there's a couple of little tiny O-rings that are pulled out and you just want to make sure that you've got a clear shot. That's where the fuel comes in. No, nope, not that one. This one. See, we got a real good shot at her. Got good flow going in that diagram. And then you just want to press these new gaskets in there that come with the, the little gasket kit. Comes with everything you freaking need to rebuild yourself one of these guys. So you just press them in there, and then it should be good to go. And you should be able to just flip it right on over onto your new Springer. Just got to make sure they all stay where they need to stay. Come on. Please work for me. All right. And then once you get on there, you can look in there and make sure you got your, your gaskets and everything good to go. And then what we'll do is we will... Put our screws back in there 
and we'll test out if we're squirting gas. I've, you know, I've never, never messed with an accelerator pump. I've heard about them, never knew what I did, what they did, until I researched them on the old YouTube. So let me go ahead and cinch this back together and we'll see if she works. All right, time for our big accelerator pump test. So we've got the new diaphragm in here. I've got all the different lines cleaned out. So let's say you were on our Harley, she's idling. Now it's time to get it. So when you crack that throttle, look at that. Oh, dude, look at that stream. That's so cool. So what's interesting was, even though this was a little clogged, it was missing the accelerator pump rod. So when she'd come off idle, it wasn't pushing down and giving it this little extra boost of gas that it needs. So I'm gonna kind of track down an accelerator uh, pump rod and we're gonna strap this thing back together and boy, I am ready to rip on this Harley. So uh, let me find some parts and we'll get back at it. All right, let's rock and put this carb back together so I can go, go vroom vroom on that hog. So I've got the carb rebuilt. We got the jets cleaned out. We got everything cleaned out. So she should be flowing good. And I went ahead and put a new bowl gasket on here, came in the kit. So when you install this, first thing I want to notice is that you need to have your pin pushed all the way flush. I tried to install this bowl earlier and it had that pin sticking out just a touch right there from your float. Just make sure that is flush because it'll rub on these little things right here. So before we put the bowl on, you've got your accelerator pump uh, rod, which don't lose this thing. I lost it for about four days. And then that rod just slides in the little plastic piece on that side just slides in there like so and then when we slide this over that accelerator pump is going to go into your accelerator pump rod is going to slide in that hole right there and this slides in there so then we just slide her down like so and if i did everything right it should boom boom but what you don't want to forget is this little plastic thing here, the little rubber boot on the accelerator pump. So slide that sucker on there first, and then we'll slide her back on there like so. Good little practice. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and rip the, uh, the four screws down here. And another thing to notice here, we've got the intake boot came off with the carburetor. I'm going to go ahead and pull this off because I've got the new intake boot and this is actually gonna install right on the intake itself. So I'll show you guys how to do that. So I'm gonna get this strapped up and then we'll put her on the actual motorcycle and get this thing humming. All right, gang, so I'm excited. So we've got the carburetor hooked up. I just put it on the same way we took it off. Uh, you got both throttle cables over here on the right and then you get your fuel line, vacuum line, two vacuum lines. And then before you test anything, make sure to get this guy set up. So that's the uh, oil transfer tube between the cylinders. So we're going to start it up to see if she starts. Everything should be clear. I do want you to notice right here the accelerator pump, and you're going to see how that works, how it shoots fuel into the throat of that carb. Hopefully. <laughs> All right, let's give her, give her a whirl here, see if we hear a little Harley rumble, which I hope to God we do. Uh -huh. They do have a funky... All right, mission on. Let's see if she starts. <laughs> oh boy, that sounds good. Nothing like it. Now let's give her a little. Look at that. You see that fuel coming back? Ooh, son, I'd say that sounds pretty dang good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and strap the rest of this stuff, and we're going to do a little, uh, do a few tests on this old girl, see how she runs, so stick with me. <laughs> All right, that's some American muscle right there. Well, folks, it's been quite the ride, but we finally got there. We got this old girl up and running right. Holy cow. This was a bigger project than what I thought, but this is an awesome running machine. She actually has pretty decent power there through first and second. Once she hit third, she's got nothing left, but uh, she's got a little torque to her. So let's walk through exactly what I did to get this old girl up and running after about five years of sitting in the garage. First thing we attacked was we put a new battery on because you want it to be able to crank, and then we checked the fuel. So you start at the gas tank, 
Uh, you can see our fuel pet cock was not letting any fuel to the carburetor, so we put that $130 Harley fuel pet cock vacuum operated on here. So we got fuel running to the carburetor. We put a new gas line on there. We got rid of that little fuel filter. So we get gas to the carburetor. Then we took the carburetor off, totally jacked. We cleaned it out, cleaned the jets, put a new accelerator pump on there. Slapped on the, uh, the air cover with the new filter, and then we try to get her running. And <laughs> well, you guys missed out on this. I got her running fantastic. I got her out there in the street. My first time on a Harley. Felt like a real man. After about five minutes, dead as a doornail. So luckily, I broke down in some dude's front yard who was covered in Harley tattoos. He helped me haul it back to the shop. So what was happening is after about 10 minutes of running, once the bike heated up, it would just kill the spark and the engine would just go kaploop, nothing left. Uh, so I did the old shotgun approach, which I highly suggest you do not do, which is start replacing every electrical component I could find on this son of a bitch. So we started at plugs and wires, put new plugs and wires on there, thought that might be it. No, that wasn't it. We went to the back, there's a circuit breaker underneath the rear wheel here. Thought that might have been it. It's a big circuit breaker fuse thing, put a new one on. That sure as hell wasn't it. So this is uh, about three times this bike had left me now. Then I talked to old Terry, who used to be a Harley mechanic. He said, Mike, every one of those old Harleys needs a new voltage regulator, which is the fin thing down in the front. So I put a new voltage regulator on it and she still left me stranded. So at this point, I was getting a little frustrated, so I went to the internet and found out that the crank position sensor on these bikes, which is about the one single electronic sensor this whole bike has, is known for going bad. So I ordered one, took a couple weeks to come in, replaced it, and holy cow, she runs perfect now. So after that, I put all new fluids in there, primary fluid, separate. Uh, oil, engine oil fluid, separate, transmission fluid, separate. This is the only bike I've ever seen that's got three separate fluids for each reservoir. Because most bikes are all have engine oil. But uh, it's fun. Well, she runs good. And if you're still watching, I appreciate you guys sticking around. And hopefully we can get this bike back to Bridget so she can get back on the road. And let's have some more fun. Let me know if you liked it. This one's a little different. Uh, but we got her running. So with that, more mics out. Get your own Harley project. And uh, let's keep rocking. I'm going to get some lawnmowers back up in this shop. Peace out.